Welcome back to Baker Bell's Yarning. Today we're going to make some simple dish cloths. We're going to do one crochet, one Tunisian, and one knit. Now this is a great project to practice your stitches on to learn new techniques or to learn an entire new craft because not only are they, they simple to do, they're also functional. So why throw out or randomly store squares of samples when you could use them? Great. So for to, so what we're going to need today is a number seven knitting needle. Now you can use a single pointed knitting needle. I prefer to have a cabled needle just because I usually end up losing one or the other. Right? And this is number seven. You're going to need a number seven standard crochet hook and a number nine. You can either use a nine crochet hook like this one as long as it's a, the same width all the way across, or you can use a number nine afghan hook or a number nine cabled afghan hook. Right? You will also need a yarn needle for sewing in your ends. As always, a good pair of scissors. Now these scissors, believe it or not, I found at the Dollarama, and they are a ceramic cutting edge. Okay. There it is there. I was a little skeptical at first, but fantastic scissors. Absolutely fantastic scissors. I still only use them for yarn and thread. Um, I don't know how well, how much they would dull if I used it on other materials, but I don't. Just as a rule of thumb with scissors, I only use my, these on yarn and thread. The last thing that we'll need is this here. This is Brene uh, Maker Fashion. It is a 78% um, cotton and a, uh, sorry, 72% cotton and a 28% nylon. This is absolutely fabulous for dishcloths and towels because it has the absorbency of cotton without the heaviness or the water retention. So it's really easy to squeeze out your dishcloths or your towels when they get saturated, but it has the versatility of, of regular cotton dish cloths. I would not recommend using this to make pot holders simply because there is nylon in it. And nylon has a tendency to melt when exposed to heat. So grab your supplies and meet me back here. We'll get started with the crochet. Right, so we have our seven millimeter hook and our yarn. As always, we're gonna start with a slip knot Just like that. Insert the hook. We're going to chain 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So at that we'll have 19 stitches, but we want 20 stitches across, so we're going to do one more. It's 21. This is the first chain from your hook. This here is the second chain, so you're going to insert your hook into the second chain, pull up yarn over and pull through both. Okay, and into the second one. And insert. Yarn over. Pull through two. Insert. Yarn over. Pull through two. And go all the way across. In future videos, I will show you how to do a chainless foundation in single, double, and half double crochets so that you can skip this particular step. It's one of the things I dislike the most is that initial row into the chain. You'll notice a lot of my patterns 
called for a chainless foundation, but it gives an alternative to if you prefer to chain and stitch into the chain itself. As you can see, this particular yarn doesn't split, doesn't catch. Just nice and simple, easy to work with, easy to stitch, easy to see your stitches. So we're going to chain one and we're going to turn. And if you take a look at the top of your work, you'll see a bunch of V's. those are your stitches. You're going to go into the space right here underneath the V, pick up your loop, yarn over, pull through, insert, yarn over, pull through, bring this all the way across, So for this particular pattern, we are going to do the two rows of single crochets. This is the second one that we're finishing up now. The ball is running away. And then we're going to do half double crochets for 13 rows. And then we're going to end it with two more rows of single crochets. Now by all means you can use any combination of stitches, any number of chains, any number of rows to make your dish cloths as big or as small or as fancy as you want. So when we get to the last stitch, if you see here, it's kind of a little on the diagonal. You can still see the V. You have to make sure that you go into this stitch every time. Otherwise, you'll just be decreasing all the way along. If you're not sure of how many stitches you have, if you take a look, you can count your V's. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Okay, we're going to chain one and turn. Now this pattern, the chain one turn, does not count as a stitch, so make sure you only count your Vs. So for the half double, we're going to yarn over, insert our hook into the stitch, pull through a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. Again, yarn over, insert your hook, pick up a loop, yarn over, and pull through all three. And do that all the way to the end.
yarn over all three, yarn over, insert through, yarn over all three, insert, yarn over. There we go. And this one. And again, this V here is our last stitch. We're going to yarn over, insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. And there's your row of half doubles. So you're going to do 12 more rows of the half double crochet, and then you're going to do two more rows of the single crochet. We'll come back here on the last row of single crochet, and I'll show you how to finish this off. Okay? All right. So we're going to pretend that I've done all 13 rows of the half double crochets and then one row of the single crochets so this will be our last row we're going to yarn over chain one turn insert into the stitch pull up a loop yarn over pull through pull through two Insert, yarn over, pull through two, insert, yarn over, pull through two. All the way to the very end of the row. way to the end. Here we are. And one more stitch. Again, look for that V. Insert your hook. Pull through and yarn over and pull through both loops. Okay. There we are. Now in order to finish, you're going to pull, you're going to clip your yarn. Just like that. I'm going to take this piece, yarn over, and pull it right through the loop, just like that, and then pull to tighten. Right? And then you take your yarn needle and weave in your ends, just like you would in any other project. Right? With this particular yarn, um, weaving in your ends can be a little bit tricky just because it's of its construction. But it's like any other super bulky yarn. Really? It takes a little bit of wiggling and convincing to get it to go through, just like that. Now I like to pull it extra tight just so that I can clip closer to or further away from my actual fabric and then I just pull it back up like that and the end dis disappears so there we go you just gotta wave in the other one and you'll have one just like this so 13 rows of half double crochets two rows of single crochet at the end and two rows of single crochet at the beginning here we are Oh, next up is Tunisian. <laughs> 